The Ben Heck Show is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com. Hello and welcome back to The Ben Heck Show. We've had a lot of comments and suggestions on the community that we should try having more detail in our episodes and longer term builds. So that's exactly what we're gonna do. We're gonna change things up around here. So over the last couple months, we've had a poll running on the community so that our lovely people out there can help us choose what long term build we're gonna do over the next year or so. The idea is to design three things that we can do correctly in such a way that they can be brought to market as possible prototypes or Kickstarters down the road. So we're gonna talk about the things we need to consider when we're actually designing something for production. And then hopefully at least one of the three things might end up as a feasible, marketable product. Well, and since we're going to be working on these over approximately a year, we decided to let Ben here choose two of his favorites. So he chose the super glue gun and the logic bomb portion of the hack Manji game that we had made. Yes, that's correct. Mm -hmm. So what is the third project going to be? Well, it was mini pinball. Ben, did you and the pinheads have a conspiracy to make that be the top builds? Someone did mention it on pinball forums. I don't think that's why it won. I think a big part of it was it just seemed like a really cool toy that people might you know want to have it like you know it doesn't take up too much space you could let your kids play with it and I just think it excited people well special thanks to everyone on the element 14 community that participated in our poll in helping us choose the build for the next year now let's talk about those three builds yes we're gonna go over them in detail and map out the episodes ahead let's get started amazing hacks should we take it for a spin Inspired Designs. Imhotep's Priests. Regrettable Acting. No one seems to get it. Each week, Element 14's The Ben Heck Show brings you innovative projects using electronics, engineering, and more. The first build we are going to talk about is Logic Bomb, the electronic board game about logic gates. Previously in this build, we programmed puzzles, designed the interface, developed the game board, and added moving pawns. Now let's talk about what we are going to do next. So here is our Hackmanji game as we made it before. So what do we want to include in the future edition? At least this part. I don't think we need any of this. No? So how are you going to keep score? Like, how are you going to keep track of whether, is it just going to be like, you got it, hooray! Da -da -da. Yeah, we could have voice or we could have a small LED display or okay. LCD display. We know we need different plugs. So these are really expensive. And while yeah. they're nice and hearty, they're really expensive. Yeah, I mean, the way Felix built that was like top of the line. Mm -hmm. We need more like bottom of the line. The goals of replacing these is to find cheaper ones that are still pretty hardy so they can stand up to lots and lots of use. You don't think? Alligator clips? <sighs> oh, those? No. But you know, I have seen so many kids rip these apart. Just like, boop, oh, Actually, you shoot. know, when we put those, when we use those on breadboards, they're mm -hmm. not very reliable. Mm -hmm. I think these are worse than the breadboard. So it's not the bre breadboard that fails, it's these. I these would be super cheap, these. though. Yeah, but it's... They'd be so cheap, they would pay us to take them. It's like, you know how there's that, you can either have it like good, fast good or cheap. cheap or fast. Tick yeah, two. it's one of those. Yeah, we need, while they would be cheap, it's not good enough. What else do we got to change? Well, I think we can make it smaller too. Uh, yeah, I think that'd be nice. This is pretty big. Yeah, uh, if we have an entire PCB, I mean, I want to make it one PCB, mm -hmm. but this would be, oh gosh, it'd be expensive. Like mm -hmm. if we get down to like, oh, I don't know, 60% of the size. And we want to move these next to the other ones so it's easier to compare. Yes, that was a so problem we had we'll before. need to completely redo the layout. Yeah, well, maybe we could double this because you need to see where the source is as mm -hmm. well, like the lights, but then we can show it over here yeah. to help you compare. Because I, I, that's what I noticed when we were playing it a couple weeks ago. You're like was, trying to go back and yeah, forth. Looking and back it's, and it's forth. too far away. Yeah. yeah. Hey, do you I have any paper? We can make a sketch of it. Da, 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 da. No, no more Mario Tennis. Don't you like Mario Tennis? Not when I hear you guys sing that song for months. Oh, we should put a handle on it, like the speak and spell. You remember the speak and spell? Maybe you're a little too young for that. They existed, I just didn't play with one. The speak and spell could teach you how to spell any word that was eight characters or less. So what if we lined up the, you know how we had the, the rows of LEDs mm -hmm. here? What if we had source? 
source and then what we have like result and compare. Mm -hmm. Like put we them all next to each other. names for those that are more apparent as to what they are. Yeah. So source is what it gives you to work with. Mm -hmm. Result is the result of your circuit and then answer. I don't know if answer is the right word. So this is what it, this is what it gives you. This is what it wants and this is what you give it. Mm -hmm. Of course, you know, we can't just have LEDs. We have to have the plugs as well. So I, I suppose that would look more like this. You'd have like, like let's say here you had. So you'd have a row of LEDs, then a row of plugs, and then two rows of LEDs or columns. Yeah. Yeah, because you'd have out to the circuitry, in from the circuitry, result from the circuitry, and then answer, which you have to match. So then, yeah, maybe this other one would be here. Mm. Yeah, I mean, we need to think about that because the way we did this was kind of confusing. Mm -hmm. But then if, if we have if we have it like that, so that we could have all the logic gates here, so you could go boop, 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 do whatever, and then come back. I guess in, in our head, we were like, you know, we thought like how, the, how we read left to right. Yeah. But it was kind of hard to like look at everything at once. I mean, if we make the unit smaller, that'll help. Mm -hmm. But I still think maybe, we should put everything on one side. Maybe instead of doing left and right, we could have them on the top, and then there can be like inputs and then outputs on, and then the oh, you mean like we could logic in the middle. So we could have the speak and spell hand. Get to have that handle. Spell extremities, as in the wolf bit off my extremities. So you're saying go up and down? Yeah, but I'm. Yeah, it's gonna be, it's tricky figuring out where the LEDs can go with the inputs that correspond to them without blocking them, but where they're all near each other so that you can read all the LEDs at once. See, this convenient carry handle, mm -hmm. you can like take it to school. Is this supposed to be a hand? Yeah, it's not very well drawn. It looks like a snake. Hands are hard to draw, okay? It's a very furry hand. Look, I could draw a better hand, I just don't have the time. Mm -hmm. Well, this is also something we can figure out in future episodes. You see that we clearly have a lot of decisions to make. If you have any ideas or input, let us know on the Element 14 community. We'll be looking for your comments. Next, we're going to talk about the Super Glue Gun Project. Previously in this build, we hacked apart a small 10 watt glue gun for the heating extruding element. We found a DC gear motor that could extrude glue, attached a 3D printer style gear grip to the motor and an idler wheel, and attached an analog speed control. Now, how are we going to turn this into a product? Hey, you remember a few years ago, before my time when you made a really awesome super duper ultra mega time glue gun? Yes, I think we called it the super glue gun or the episode might've been called the great glue gun. Mm -hmm. Just remember that we made a glue gun. Because you know, I've been a fan of glue guns for years. You know, I've been using them since like the '90s. But one thing I've noticed is that they've kind of gotten worse over the years. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I swear they didn't leak as much in the past. I think the the quality's just gone down. I, I mean, I really hate that. Like, you'll have your glue gun sitting there, and then it just leaks and leaks and leaks. Like, if you if you if you give it the chance, it'll leak out an entire glue stick worth of glue. Yeah. In fact, it leaks to the like point that. it stops leaking only when the glue piles up right up to the nozzle. Mm -hmm. You know, like. A stalactite and a stalagmite. Yeah. You know, it's like they don't stop until they connect. Uh, yeah, but so I thought, you know, there might be some other cool things to do with a hot glue gun, like this the stand. Yeah. Right? So, oh, look, there's a stand. And if you got to get into a crevasse, you can click it back. Mm -hmm. But then you have to, like, do this to set it down. Right. That takes time. Let's see, you go to pick up your glue gun, right? And once your finger touches the trigger, what if this retracted automatically? Yes, that would be cool. And then when you set it down, well, you would let go, and then it would come out, and then you'd set it down. Mm -hmm. That's one of those things, like if you showed it to a glue gun enthusiast or someone who uses glue guns, all you have to do is show them that, and they would instantly understand <laughs> what yeah, it is yeah. and how awesome it is. So our thought was when we start up this project, we bought a variety of different glue guns so we can like take them apart and be inspired as to how to build ours. I mean, obviously we're gonna have to source our own parts, but we'd like to see how other people are doing it first. Um, so the microcontroller, this is a uh, 328P Mega. That might be overkill. I wonder if we could get away with an AT Tiny, yeah. or maybe even one of those really tiny, Super, tiny, uh, like, like a AT Tiny nine tinies. or 10. But yeah, we could do some research with microcontrollers and figure out what might be best. Um, yeah, and then I think, of all the projects that we're gonna do this year, this one would definitely need the most high-tech casing. But oh we, yeah, the yeah. To heat resistant plastic. But we did get that stuff. auto uh, desk Fusion 360 software mm -hmm. that we use a lot actually. And uh, maybe we could get some help in though, because I mean, we're talking about something, you know, with a lot of contours. And mm -hmm. if this is to be a pro product, we have to design something that can be injection molded. So yeah, that's what we're gonna do for the super glue gun, because this thing needs to be real. Finally, let's talk about mini pinball. Previously in this build, we built a complete miniature pinball machine with a Teensy 3.0 controller, sound, and an LED display. This one could be a little tricky. Felix, why is this pinball machine sitting in the middle of the shop? 
I don't know. It's just taking up a lot of space. Why are these things so big? Hmm. Can you imagine if these were like smaller? Tiny, like you could fit on a desk? Yeah, like that project we made once. Yes, the, uh, the mini pinball. The mini pinball machine. That was pretty fun. Didn't we have like two weeks to make that, but we actually did like three weeks of work? Yeah. That was. <laughs> There's a lot of work that was done on that, like after hours to get it mm -hmm. done. But you know what? I actually enjoyed it the entire time. So I was thinking the pinball, the mini pinball machine could be a cool product. A mm -hmm. lot of people asked if this was a kit or if they could buy it, how much would it cost? You know, could it, could it have a generic theme? I think the big problem we're gonna have with a mini pinball machine are the mechs. Yeah. I think that pro project had the most custom 3D printed objects of anything yeah, we've ever built on the show. Because mm -hmm. um, we had like a left and right flipper. Mm -hmm. And then we had the drop target mech, and then we had like some ramps. And we can't put 3D prints in a mass produced product. Right. Maybe we could make like universal mechs. Like we designed like two, maybe three things, mm -hmm. like actuators that could be used for anything. It could be a flipper, it could be a ball loader, it could be a pop bumper. Okay. That way we only have to make maybe two injection molds. And they could be in the same mold. You know, you shoot it once and you get the parts. Okay, yeah. Because otherwise it's not going to be feasible. Then also, this is a kit, I guess, for people. So somebody could customize it for whatever... Yeah, it comes blank, and then we could give them the templates, like mm -hmm. the PSD file, or they could download them or something. And they could put art on it, and they could take it to like FedEx Kinko's and like get a poster print done, stick it onto the material, and then have a custom game. Yeah, I think that's pretty cool. And maybe what we could do with the mechanisms is there could be like maybe four spots on the mini play field mm -hmm. where there's just like a blank hole right. and then there's different mechanisms like a pop bumper or something else and you could put them wherever you want okay. so it's kind of like I don't want to say a Lego game but kind of like that where you can customize it maybe we could have actually maybe we could have like Lego block holders on it you know like you know how they sell like a base floor of Legos mm -hmm. and then you stick things onto it yeah. so we have to reduce the number of mechanisms to give the pin mini pinball machine any sort of chance yes and then we have to make it pretty simple so it can be in a flat pack I mean the thing wasn't that big to right. begin with, uh, like a big shoe box. But if we can make it like uh, like a pizza box, you know, like so it's it's like oh, yeah, a, IKEA furniture. Put like it you, together. Yeah. You put it together and you tab it, and mm -hmm. hopefully it's better than IKEA furniture. So the community overwhelmingly wanted us to make a mini pinball machine, but as Felix and I have just discussed, there's a lot of potential problems with making something that could actually be brought to market. So if you have any ideas of how to help us achieve these goals, please let us know on the Element 14 community at element14.com forward slash. TBHS. Well, that was a pretty good breakdown on how we're going to accomplish these three builds over the course of the next year, and then hopefully get one of them to the point where it can be turned into an actual product, perhaps via Kickstarter. One thing that's really important to us this year is getting you more involved in the show. So we have a new segment called Help a Community Member, where you can go on the Element 14 community, where you can ask a question or ask for help with a build, submit an idea, and then we'll go through those, select a few to have them featured on the show. Right, we also would like to interact with you more in real time. Now obviously the episodes are filmed about three weeks before they're actually aired, so you can't interact while the episode is you know, being watched, but you can interact while the episode is being made. So you can see those interactions happen once you watch the finished product. So look for me on the Element 14 community so that you can help us out with our builds in real time. Well, that's all the time we have for today. But to recap, we're going to do three major projects over the course of the next year, mm -hmm. and then divide it up so you see two episodes of one project, two episodes of the other project, two episodes of the next project, to keep it fresh. And then along the way, we'll have supplemental episodes where we cover other things like teardowns, tips and tricks, and more. Start thinking of your questions and ideas to submit for the Help a Community Member segment on the Element 14 community on element14.com forward slash TBHS. You can also go there to read about other upcoming episodes, builds, and special events. Let's get started. Hmm? Uh, uh? Hand, as in you use your hand when you touch a wolf. <laughs> there are four lights. You know how sometimes you see things out of the corner of your eye, but when you look, it's not actually there? That's that. Never mind. Isn't that kind sense. of what we're doing already? That's kind of what we're doing. I'm just, I'm wrong. What? Did you, huh? did you get that on tape? The Ben Heck Show is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com.